Hi everybody, James with Love My Pups and uh, My Breeder Supply. Uh, today we're going to do a video on how often you should breed your dog um, and you know is back-to-back -back breeding um, good, bad and what are the pluses and minuses on what direction you take based on the frequency that you have puppies. <clears throat> um, and I see quite a bit of misinformation about this. Um, so I want to go over um, what I believe is the truth. Um, and the, and uh, the short answer is, is that breeding a dog is actually good for a dog in terms of its reproductive health. But there are definitely other considerations that go on here that should make you have an informed decision as to whether or not you're going to breed your dog consistently or not. So, um, and I'm going to get a bit of flack on this from people because a lot of people in the show world think that you should give dogs a break between breedings. Um, and there are some reasons why absolutely that might be a sensible thing to do, but there are some contrary reasons why you shouldn't, you should do back-to-back -back readings as well. So let's just discuss generally what happens with a dog when it goes through a pregnancy. So when a dog goes into heat, regardless of whether it has puppies or not, its progesterone level starts to rise and stays high for two months. So I'm going to draw a little graph here to describe what's going on. So we've got a dog here. This is progesterone level. And typically we measure that in uh, um, milliliters per nanogram is the normal way to read that. And a dog that's not in heat at all will have a number that's less than one. And a dog that goes into heat will eventually have a number that's high, maybe as high as 60. So what happens is, is this dog that's not in heat is rocking along at a number that's less than one and then it starts to produce drops of blood and that's the first day of its heat and then its progesterone level takes a slow rise then it takes a really rapid rise and that dog then stays at a high progesterone level and this by the way this is about the point that you'd be AIing the dog and that is about day 11 through 13 okay um, and then this whole process from when you AI the dog to when it would have a puppies is typically about 61 days. And what happens is the progesterone level then drops and the dog then goes into a six month or whatever, four month, 12 month period where its progesterone level is low again. So <clears throat> this rise in progesterone happens regardless of whether you have bred the dog or not. And the problem is, is that high progesterone levels are not good for a dog in general. They're certainly not good for, for, for its uterus. I know that sounds crazy, but that's the truth of it. So what, there's a difference between a dog that is, being, is pregnant versus one that's not pregnant. And that is, at this point right here, the inner lining of the uterus is sloughed off. It has a pregnancy, it has a whelp, and then basically it regenerates itself a new lining the, uh, to, to, the, to the uterus. And so what you find is, is that dogs that have been bred consistently back to back have less occurrences of pyometria. And pyometria is basically a pus-filled uterus, a very nasty situation that if that dog doesn't discharge that pus and it gets closed up, that dog is going to get in big problems and will probably have to have surgery and be spayed. And if it's not, it may well die. And it may still die. It's not a good situation. And then you've got things like, I'll pronounce it wrong, but uh, um, um, mucometria and uh, cystic endometrial hyperplasia. All of these things are problems to do with the uterus. So if you have puppies, you get a basically a really good thorough clean out of the uterus and that occurs right here. If you don't have puppies, you still go through this whole process, but you don't get the flushing action at the end. And that's why there are lots of studies that have been done on dogs. For instance, what they do is they look at dogs that are kennel dogs that typically have lots of babies versus dogs that only have one or two litters in their lifetime or none. And they find there is a significantly increase in uh, pyometria and uterine cancer uh, and and those two those uterine cancer is the number two killer of, of french bulldogs or not well, of dogs in general 
Uh, the number one killer is skin tumors, cancers that are caused by um, skin cancers. But the number two in females is uterine cancer. And uh, so um, there, is, it's, there is some definite evidence here that says that definitively a dog that is bred more frequently is less likely to run into a, a uterine problems. Now, if the dog is spayed, all of this is off the table. If the dog is spayed, the dog just rocks along and it has a low progesterone level, and you don't have the high progesterone that's causing the problem. So if you spay your dog, all of this is completely out the window, because we're not talking about breeding the dog anyway, and all those pot pot potential dangers are, are gone. So, the, the repo people these days will say, it makes sense to breed a dog back to back <clears throat> with the proviso that the, the, the girl, the the mother is in good shape and bounce back properly from um, the, uh, <clears throat> the pregnancy. I, I do it slightly differently, so I'm going to go over what my rules are for me personally. This is me personally. I'm not dictating what you should do. This is just me personally. So there's, there's a number of other things that I think just to willy-nilly be breeding back to back, I think that that's a mistake. I think you have to put it in with these, this, this context. And I'm specifically talking about Frenchies here. So we've got, Frenchies have a C-section, at least they should. If you have a C-section, you get a bit more information because you get to look under the hood and see how it looks on the inside. So that's pretty useful. Right, so here's, here's what I do. The first thing is, when do you start your first breeding? Well, I think that that needs to be at least a year old dog and hopefully two heat cycles. So I'm just gonna put down here one year. Typically dogs are older than that. A lot of people will say the dog should be a year and a half and I'm not gonna argue that. But something around a year plus, preferably two heat cycles, Dogs that are less than a year old, I don't breed them. Um, and if you do, you probably have problems getting them pregnant because the heat cycle is so irregular that you'll probably have a tough time anyway. So the first thing is start at a year old. Now, so the next thing is, is how was the litter? So you have some information about how the litter was. Did you have any problems? Did you have some dogs that, you know, puppies that had cleft palates or inguinal hernias? Did you have puppies that fail to thrive? You know, if you, and I don't mean just a singleton of this, one occurrence of it means that you shouldn't be breeding that dog, but just pay attention to what you're producing. If you're having problems, then don't repeat it. Certainly don't repeat that breeding. Breed to a different dog if you have problems. So the first thing is, how is the litter? And if that's a tick, then that's, that's, a, that's a go status. The next thing is, is how his uterus look? How does... The uterus look and remember for c-section candidates like french bulldogs you actually get to look at that so if her uterus when the dog's in there i always ask and i'm actually there for the operation it was to get to look myself but you know do we have lots of adhesions and scarring how does it how does a general uterus look and if the answer to that is good then that's a go right okay then the next thing is is how did she behave towards her babies so I'm going to put down behavior. So, you know, were there problems? You know, was she a difficult mum? Did she not look after her puppies well? Was she aggressive? Any of these things, that's a serious, hey, we've got to rethink this. Are we going to go through this again? Was she not mature enough? Was that the reason for it? Are we going to risk this one more time? But if the behavior was good, then that's a go. And then the next thing is, is the size of the litter. And... If it's a huge litter, an abnormally large litter, that can put a huge strain on a mum where she really looks rough. She's her backbone showing, you know, she's a hard time keeping all the calories on. She's trying to produce milk like crazy for those babies. She gets pulled out, her coat's got blown. So litter size, large litters, large litters are ones where you might say, hey, look, we need to think about giving that girl a break till the next cycle because she needs to be back. So I'm gonna put this along with is, is you know, uh, mum's recovery. This is what this is about. And this is one of the huge things, mum, mum's recovery. So these two really go together. And I wanna see a dog that's fully recovered. You know, before you're thinking about breeding that dog again, before that dog is come back into heat, is it a happy, healthy, running around dog with normal weight, with good, with good tone, with good uh, fur. 
if all of that's good, then that's a good. If she'd had a really big litter, then it's quite likely that she may need a break. Now she's really got, you know. And then, then there's some, so those are the things that, these are all the things that, uh, and, and by the way, if she's consistently having small litters, then sp specifically if she's getting older, then this is the time that, uh, um, you know, if you've got a small litter, then you, know, you might want to think about, again, whether or not you're going to be doing some breeding. Okay, so those are all things that are to do with the dog. Now, there's some other things, too, that are to do with you. That is, is how did you cope with the previous litter? You know, are you in this position? Now, number one, did you enjoy it? Was it fun? I mean, obviously, you know, it, it could be work. I mean, you know, everything that's fun still worked. Don't get me wrong here. But, you know, how, we, how did you cope with it? Because you, you're part of the equation as well. You've got to commit the time to look after your girl and her babies and you know I've been in situations before when somebody can breed a dog and then I get a call from and says you know we're pregnant and we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have uh, our own baby coming up the same time these babies are gonna be born we're thinking that we maybe we should just take a break from this one it's like yeah I think you're exactly right don't you know lick, make sure you've got your own human resources available to do this so you know you've got to have that you know if you've got things that are gonna make your life really hectic about the times especially for the first four weeks the puppy's around and your life's going to be really hectic, you might think twice about it. Um, but if all of this lines up with all ticks on it, then go for another breeding. Absolutely go for another. It's better for your girl that way. And the, the I'm going to get rid of this one, right? So um, <clears throat> the other thing about all this is what is the, what is the uh, potential uh, ability of your girl to have puppies? And the answer to that is a, a dog that's six years old is 33% less likely to conceive than a dog that is younger. So younger dogs, so dogs that are in that one and a half years to five year range, they are in their prime. They are the prime candidates to have successful litters and bounce back and be good. Dogs that are six years and older, then those are the dogs that maybe uh, they should be thinking about not having puppies from them. And it could Depends on the breed. I know French Bulldogs. A six-year-old French Bulldog is a fairly old French Bulldog, and it's very unusual to be breeding six-year-old French Bulldogs. So typically the cutoff at six years, you're done with Frenchies. I mean, it's very rare that somebody's breeding six-year-olds and older French Bulldogs. Uh, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it, but I mean, I've never done it. Um, but um, certainly what the repo people would be, be doing is say, breed consistently every heat cycle from a, a year plus on until they're five years old and then let them have a litter every time. But I also want to add the proviso, make sure that the dog is healthy, the dog bounces back, she was good to her babies, and that the whole process was fun to you and you had time to go take care of, of do things properly. Um, that's it, got comments and uh, uh, suggestions about any of these videos, um, let us know. If you think we're idiots, let us know, we'll address that. And uh, again, we appreciate you watching our videos. We'd love it if you subscribe to us and uh, be nice to your dogs and be good. Bye.